Hi beautiful souls, this is Clara Camino speaking. I am going to read from my memoirs that I wrote um, quite a long time ago. So the first thing that I just wanted to share with you is that when I was in my teens, when I was just like walking about and then my aunt says, uh, you must never throw away any of your your notes your little journal your things where you write about your soul so although um she's never really said anything other than that pertaining to writing i have always honored that little instruction and kept all my notes so obviously i did this journey in the year 2001 now it's exactly 21 years later and I have not consulted, I've not consulted my notes because I didn't want to go back and read the details. So instead, what happened is Spirit one day said, sit down and start writing about that journey, but without consulting uh, my notes, which I then did. And that was in the year 2019. So that's like two, three years ago. And then yesterday, I got nudged into finding this document, which wasn't even easy, <laughs> because it was on such an old uh, laptop that I had to go buy the Microsoft license again, just to go have a look at the, at the, um, at my writing. And one of the things that I wanted to keep was the purity of who I was at the time when I did the walking. So I didn't do any like changes to sound more hip or to use more um, relevant words that we currently do. I basically left the wording as, as innocent as I was 21 years ago, meaning that it was before the time where I learned about spiritual lingo. Let me put it that way. And um, obviously the way, I think I wrote it to organize my mind. Yeah, it was a way of, for me to start making sense of things. So it, it was really like just a personal memoir. So there's even little chapters, but some of them are like maybe five lines long, which I think is, is the way I like it. Okay, so I'm going to start reading. Chapter one, big decisions. For my 10th birthday, I decided that I'm going to live until I'm 35. There was no depression and no joy to the information. It was merely a fact. It was a number that had a date. Chapter 2. The Aftermath The day after year 35 plus one day was a crisis day for me. There was nothing planned, nothing dreamt. That is a dangerous place if the mind cannot imagine. Chapter 3. Action Plan I woke up in a neutral mood with one question. What now? I was so blown by my own nothingness that I decided to go shopping. I'm 35 years and one day. My belief is that this day was so natural and neutral that I had no issue about it. It felt as real as an Armageddon that shall never come. I don't know whether I should tell you, but, but this wasn't a coincidence. I had zero imagination that I would live beyond 35. I had no dreams, no plans. I was so shocked when I lived one day longer than my 31st birth, 35th birthday. Okay. Chapter four, the guidance. I entered a bookshop and I was immediately drawn to a book. I picked it up and the book said, don't buy me, 
there's just one line that you need to read and then you will know what to do. Whilst flip paging the book, I had one thought. You guessed it. It's very rude to read a book without buying it. It's disrespectful to the author and robbing them of their share of the wallet. Oh my. And if you thought the bigger question was whether books can, can or cannot speak, we are in serious trouble. By now you need to know that trees talk, books bring messages, humans mainly make noise. Now that we've settled that, let's continue. Only a few moments into steel reading and I got it. I've got it. I have it. I know. It says, and pilgrims to this day walk the way. This is how I recall the story of a book that did not want to be bought and the beginning of a journey. And for the next six months, I searched for information, travel guide to, and travel guide, and a book on the ultimate pilgrimage. And for six months or more, not one bookshop, travel agent, not even secondhand bookshops, knew about the pilgrimage. Eventually, I decided to book my trip. And the travel agent thought that Santiago was meant in Chile. And I basically was like almost about to buy a ticket going around the world when I realized uh, it's a different Santiago that we're looking for. In 2001, the Camino was not yet in the public domain here in South Africa as it is today. I went back to the bookshop. At least I need to know where to begin and where to end. And Saint Jean Pierre de Port in the south of France became my new destination. And from there, I would walk along Lyon, Burgess, towards Santiago de Compostela, and then on to Finisterra. Slowly but surely, I gathered a wealth of information. I would relish in each and every discovery that I made. Discovery one, the Camino is a metaphor for life. Without fa any further ado, I came to the conclusion that I was born without a manual and thus I can relinquish in the search for a tourist or travel guide as the Camino is intended to get your guidance from above. So be it. I abruptly halted all research and attempts to find a guidebook and the upward direction for all types of answers started. Discovery 2. The intent with which one walks the Camino determines how the ley lines will offer their assistance. Some walk it for its architectural beauty and they need lots of camera memory. Some cyclists to test their athletic abilities and streamline through the little towns until they torpedo into Compostela, sideways, stopwatch in hand. And as for me, I only know one objective, one mission, one question, one search, so no inner dialogue confused its importance and clarity. You walk the way of the pilgrim because the distance between the human heart and that of the divine should touch and meet. Discovery 3. I did not know who James was. Then, still don't know. And after regularly having to look up, which one did what? The one with the earring thing. Oh, not an earring, an ear thing. <laughs> and again, I cannot remember the relevance. I suppose and this has always been my thing on my take on things. If I forget the info repeatedly, it is not meant for me to remember. Set it free. It's not meant for me. Still. And I still live by that rule. Uh, oh, chapter five, obedience. Equipped best, I knew for the unknown, 
I left Joburg, arrived in Madrid, and made my way to St. Jean Pierre de Port by taxi. Not my first choice, but because my Spanish and their English could not purchase a cheaper bus ticket or a train ticket. I spent half my pocket money on one taxi ride to get to the departure point, And then I still had six weeks left to walk. Chapter 6. The Journey After much here and there to back and forth, I found the refugio for pilgrims. I was so grateful for a safe and warm bed, the excitement of different languages, excluding English, and discovered that I am Clara. The next morning, I started at 7 a.m. to compensate for the rather steep climb of the Pyrenees that must be done by sunset to overnight at Roncesvalles. I reached the peak just after noon and found the snowy ice rather interesting. As I started the descent, I started walking slower and slower and the pain started to increase. By now all the pilgrims have passed. The pain was so much that I started to hallucinate. Each leaf and later every little river stone became alive. I saw the energy dance within and around me. And the pain unbearable. I was the last one in and got the top bunker bed. By now I had to make do. I climbed to the top and could not even have dinner. And all I wanted to do was break the fever. I tried to sleep. The pain never left. It grew more intense and sometimes just intense. It never left. I never had blisters or bruises to show. I looked like the perfect picture of health except for the pain that showed in the lines around my face. The pain became my new norm. Others could see it, and yet they dare not ask. Something for which I was grateful. One question and my floodgates would have opened like a monsoon out of season. Nothing about this pain made sense. In those quiet stretches between towns and farm fields, my heart sang songs of joy. I even loved the smell of cow dung and sheep manure. It felt like farm. It felt familiar. And I wondered what such pain could serve a human being. Thank you for listening to the recollection and my memoirs of a pilgrimage of 21 years ago. See you in part two.